Okay, so in this video, we're going to introduce, uh, I guess, what I call stack multiplication, where we stack the numbers up and write them like this. Now, I should tell you that I'm not really the biggest fan of this process where we say, okay, 4 times 5 is, is 20, so we put a 0 here and 2 tens up there, and then 4 times 2, which is really 20, is 8, and then we add those other 2 tens, which is 100. So we write a 10 here, because we think of that as 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Right? That's the basic stack method. I'm not the biggest fan of this, but you know what? There are some advantages to it, and I think everyone should at least have access to it. So I want to I wanna introduce what this is all about, and why this makes a lot of sense, and then I'll let you decide, as a learner, what, what methods you want to use when you're multiplying. So where does all this come from? Well, if you're given the problem... 25 times 4. What does this mean? Well, this means take four groups of 25. That's one way to think about it. Four groups of 25. But multiplication is commutative, which means we can look at it from other orders without changing anything. We could say 25 groups of 4. And either way, we'll, we'll realize that, oh, if you take four groups of 25, which is 25 plus 25 plus 25, right? If you add up four groups of 25, oops, what you get is 100. And here, if I was to add 25 groups of 4, I don't want to write all of them out, so I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot. If we had 25 fours, that would also equal 100. And really what you're doing, in, in, a, in a picture of course, is always nice. With the first equation, if we had a group, and in this group there's 25 something, if we had four of those groups, I right, can just copy and paste those groups, here's two, three, and four, if we put them all together, we get a hundred in total. And here again, with the second example, I'm not going to, to draw out 25 groups of four, but if we had 25 small groups of four, right? They're all the same size, um, in this in this big in this big area right here, that would be 100 as well. Well, the idea is that we don't have to multiply like this. Instead of looking at 25 times four as four groups of 25, or 25 times four as 25 groups of four, what we could do is break up the numbers we're given, and that's where this technique comes from. Because the idea is, instead of saying, what is 25 times 4, we could break up 25. We could break it up into 20 and 5, two smaller numbers. And then take each of those numbers and multiply them both by 4. And we'll get the same thing. Let's look at that. This is, again, kind of a source of where the stack method comes from. So again, instead of 25, we're saying, let's think of that in a different way. Let's think of that as 20 and 5, and we're going to leave 4 as 4. So now what we're going to do is multiply 20 and 5 by 4. We could write it like this. So 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 20 is 80. And if we add these two up, because we want to add the groups that we just multiplied out, we would get, well, 80 and 20 is 100. And that's the basic idea of the stack method, where we take one of the numbers, split it up into its unit places, or to its place value, excuse me, and then multiply by each place value. So really, the stack method is about two things. The first is breaking numbers apart. I'll write that down here. First, you have to be comfortable and flexible with breaking numbers apart into smaller pieces. And I think the second thing you have to be comfortable with, and there, there are other things as well, um, but I'm saying the second thing you have to be com comfortable with aside from breaking apart the numbers is place value. You need to recognize the difference between different place values. So let's look at the number, um, let's look at a quick place value example. 123. Of course, place value, um, what it does is tell us that the location of the number, so here's a 3, tells us 
um, really everything we want to know about that number. So since this number is first, it's the unit value or the ones place. And what that means is that this three represents three individual chips or ones. And then in the next box, right, here we have the number two. Now, of course, the two looks like the three, but the power of place value is that once this is in a different location, we know this is not just two chips, but this is two tens, right? This is the ten place. So, in fact, this represents 20 chips. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So this two represents two groups of ten, right? It's the tens place, one group of ten and another. And then in this other location, right? This other location right here, this other place, right? Place value. We have a one, but in fact this is the biggest number of all. This one represents one hundred chips, or one group of one hundred. So every number we see here represents a group of a hundred chips hundreds place. Now, I'm, not, I'm not going to draw a hundred chips, but you can picture, right, if I hear, if, if there's a hundred dots here, I don't know, that this number, because it's here, represents 100. Okay, so how does this tie into to stack multiplication? Well, let's go back to what we, what we originally saw, 25 times 4. Let me move that 4 over. One thing that's really important in stack multiplication, because place value comes into, into play, the location and place of the digits really matters. So I want to make sure this 4, which is in the 1's place, also lines up with this 5, which is also in the 1's place, and that this 2, which is in the 10's place, lines up with the 10's place here. Now there's no value in the 10's place, so it should be above an empty space. And that lining up helps me make sense of the stack method. So again, in the stack method, we're breaking apart the numbers, just like we did here. But we're not going to physically break them apart. We're not going to show it. And that's often, I think, what students forget. This background stuff here that's happening is very easy to picture, I think. Although, if it's confusing, let me know and we'll talk about it. But here, this is a much neater process, but it, I think it's hard to think about. So what happens in the stack method is we take our ones digit and multiply it by the ones place, just like we did here, 4 times 5. And 4 times 5 is 20. But instead of writing 20 like this in its full value, we write a 0 in the 1's place. Because what is 20? Well, it's 0 1's and 2 10's. And we write a 2 up here. And that just means, okay, well, we got 4 times 5 is 20, which is made up of 0 1's and 2 10's. Now, I put the 2 here, but you can put it directly above the other 10 if you want. Just remember that now you have more tens to add. And next we take 4 times 2. But really, 4 times 2 is 4 times 20, just like we did here. We multiply 4 by 20. And 4 times 20 is 80, but we still have to add in the other 20 from the last multiplication step. So 4 times 20 is 80, and 2 more is 100. So we write 1 in the 100 place and 0 in the tens place, and we have our answer. And really, if we have nothing else down in this video, let's get one thing down, which is why the place value matters, how to write these little numbers up here, and where this is coming from. The process itself we'll get more familiar with as we go on. And really, like if I take 23 times 4, well, 4 times 3 is 12, so write 2 in the 1's place, if you think about the number 12, has 2 1's and 1 10. So put the 2 here and the 1 there, because this 1 is really a 10. And now we do 4 times the next place value. 4 times 2, really 4 times 20, but we're just thinking of it as 4 times 2, is 8. And then there's 1 10 left over, so that's 9, or 90. So 4 times 23 is 92. Now, I mean, what I would have done if I was multiplying this is to break up 23 into 20 and 3 times 4. And think about it this way. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 20 is 80. Add the 2 up, and we get 92. Because you want to add those pieces up. But these two, these two processes, they look different, but really they're saying the same thing. The, the, the major advantage of, of the stack method 
is if you notice, when we were doing 4 times 20, we only had to think of it as 4 times 2, which is nice. And that means that in the stack method, no matter how nasty your numbers get, all you have to know is your multiplication tables up to 10, right? 10 by 10, because the combination here, you're only going to be combining one place value with another. And in a single place value, you can never have more than 10 digits. So in fact, you really, uh, in many ways, only have to know your multiplication tables up to nine in each direction. And that's an, a really nice feature. But we'll look at some more examples in the next video. Hope this helps.